Hello, and welcome along to the stream. Uh, so, I wasn't here on Friday. Uh, so, anyone who was looking for a stream on Friday lunchtime, uh, yeah, I wasn't here. I was in uh, London at a training course uh, with Scott Helm, who was teaching me all about uh, hacking yourself first, uh, looking into different uh, website vulnerabilities and how you can protect yourself against those. Uh, I can honestly say I had a thoroughly good time and I learned a lot. So uh, thanks a lot to Scott for that. Uh, if anyone is in Glasgow next week, uh, Scott's running another course, uh, well, basically another version and another instance of the same course. Uh, so I would recommend that you check that out. Uh, definitely, definitely useful. So as a quick recap of where we are with this project. So this stream today is going to be another another session on trying to get this project called DevGep. Uh, that's the code name that we're using up and running. So where we got to on our previous stream was we got to a point where we have uh, an ASP.NET MVC front end, that very, very basic website at the minute, but it is capable of authenticating to GitHub and log logging us in to the website. And from there, we started stubbing out a user interface for uh, fetching uh, these things called subscriptions. Now, those subscriptions are being collected from uh, an Azure function API that we've created. So uh, we're in the process of stubbing those out. And that Azure Function API is then reading and storing data in uh, Azure Table Storage. So if we look down here at our tables, we should have a subscriptions table. And in that subscriptions table, we started adding some things. So it is keyed based on the currently logged in user. So the difference that we're seeing here in the partition key, uh, here we were hard coding the partition key, which we said was going to be the uh, username with uh, some hard coded values. And then we actually then jumped to use the uh, user ID that we're actually getting back from the GitHub authentication provider. So that's why there was a jump between uh, Bill and Bob uh, to this one here. And that's the one that we can uh, tie back into our actual uh, ASP.NET users table, which is what we've got here. Okay, so all of that was running. So if I run this again, just to make sure that everything's still running. So this is me running up the uh, ASP.NET MVC website. And once that's up and running, I've got another instance of Visual Studio here that is the API side of things. So let's just make sure that everything's running and working before we start doing anything else. And we'll build from there. So it's spawning an instance of the .NET CLI, which is running our ASP.NET MVC core project. And once that's up and running, we should get a new instance of uh, likely Chrome, I think is my default browser, or no, it is Edge. So I'll spin up a new instance of Edge and navigate to that website, which is what we have here. And then in preparation for the next step, let's spin up our Azure Functions API. So it will run up the Azure emulator that we have, that I've got installed locally. And we'll see that this func.exe, this will spin up and it will show uh, some ASCII art. And then we'll know that things are running, which is what this is. And then once that's running, it'll tell us where the API endpoint is looking at. And we currently have three Azure functions. There's two get ones, uh, which is for uh, a single subscription, which is what's coming out of our Azure table storage, or a collection of them keyed off of the user ID. And then we all also got an Azure function for adding a subscription. So if we go back into here and then log in. So if we log in with GitHub, which is the only authentication provider that we have at the minute, 
we click on that, then we should get signed in. We're signed in as Bill. If we click on subscriptions, then we should see it reach over to our get subscriptions uh, API and it's returning those things. And then we should have the option to create a new one. So the, the last screen that we created was create new, uh, which stubbed out this. So I will just create, use my name here and I'll say create. That should hit a breakpoint that we have, which is there. So let's take this out just now and then let's let that continue. And then we'll let that continue. And if that runs, we should get a redirect back to the list and it should now have two things in it. So if we go back over here, then once this finishes, because it's still running, then we'll see that's the new one it just got created. So I think that's, that, that's where we left off. So we got to the point uh, in last Monday's session where we had the new ad working. So that one that's just been added in here, if we look at our Azure Storage Explorer and we click back on the subscriptions table, then we should see that there are two things in there now, which there are. Uh, and that's it. So there's some things in here that we need to tidy up. Uh, ultimately, the these columns here we don't really care about, so we need to take them out of the view. But the one that I'm going to look at now is uh, I want to be able to delete this thing. So right now, if I click delete, nothing happens. It doesn't do anything, right? <laughs> um, so what we need is uh, a new entry in our uh, controller so that we can handle this delete. And then we need a new entry in our service layer, which then controls uh, the actual deletion. And then we need a new Azure function that will actually delete that entity. So there's a few hops that we need to go through there, but the segregation of the user interface from the API just kind of makes it easier to handle in the long run. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this running instance of the site and I'm going to go ahead and stop the running instance of uh, .NET and I'm going to stop the running instance of Azure Function Emulator and I think we should start by adding a new class which is going to be our uh, delete method. So let's go ahead and close all of these documents. We'll get back to the start. So the one that we just created was, was this uh, add subscription. I'm going to have to remove that now that I've seen it because that's an unnecessary using statement. So let's go in here and say add class that is going to be delete subscription. If I can type that out. So this is going to be delete subscription. So what we had in our get subscription, so let's bring this one over. In our get subscription, we used some functionality of the Azure storage uh, package that we pulled in, which was, uh, which had the ability to reach directly into the database to find one specific uh, entry in order to return it. So I think we're going to use something similar to that uh, to actually reach again into the table storage, pull out the one uh, subscription that we're interested in, and then from there we'll be able to delete it. So let's get this started. So let's make this a public class, and similarly we'll make this a static class. And then that's the delete the subscription, and then uh, I should have stubbed it out as a new Azure function. It would have given me some of this already. That's why it didn't work but all Azure functions have this run method in it. So let's grab the majority of this. I did the wrong keyboard shortcut there, I think. It didn't like what I did there. So I'm gonna say copy, I'm gonna say paste, and it's missing a closing one there. Let's make this equal to this. That's not resolving because it doesn't know about the using statement. So let's pull that in. 
and then this won't be working for the same reason so let's pull in some using statements for that the task is not going to work because of the same reason so let's see if we can get that to pull in there we go I should probably just have copied all of these using statements from below but we've started now so let's just complete that subscription this thing here is our common subscription model which we will use and then iLogger is the logger implementation oh there's two of those which one is it I'm going to guess it's the extensions logging let's grab that and let's put this in here and let's delete some of these and let's put the system one at the top just to keep things tidy uh, why is that oh because we're probably not returning anything yeah we need to return something from our so if the so the question the immediate question is uh what is the correct so this is our api so it's uh ultimately it doesn't have a um doesn't have a user interface so the response codes that we get back from this api are important so the first question that i have in my head is what is the correct http response code for a delete operation because normally you would return with like a 200 or a 201 created so the http status code for a delete according to according to stack overflow uh, for a delete request http 200 or 204 should imply resource deleted successfully 202 can also be returned which could imply that the instruction was accepted by the server and the resources was marked for deletion um, successful response should be 200 okay if the response includes an entity describing the status no we're not doing that okay so let's just go with 200 so in this response here let's just assume that everything went fine and we're going to go and return uh okay result uh, does it want something i don't necessarily want to return anything though hmm. i don't think i want to delete anything there Hmm. Yeah, because the description won't exist anymore, so we've just deleted it. So let's see what else there is. What else could we return here? Okay, the, okay, there's an okay object result and that okay result. So let's just return an okay result rather than an object result. Let's do that. Perfect. Okay. Let's borrow some logging. And we'll put this in here to say that we are doing the delete subscription. And then in here, I think what we need to do is something similar to the add that we did. So let's put the add down in this window so that we can see them together. So when we did the add operation, we did something similar to this. So I think what we want to do is var result is equal to await subscription i haven't i where did subscription table come from um i might need let's bring this in as well let's see if we can bring in table so here I'm going to see if I, I don't actually know if I can do this, but let's see if we can. So this one, this one is trying to give me a specific subscription using the user ID and the subscription ID. This one will give me a reference to the overall table. And I think on the overall table, let's bring that in. 
if I go here and say subscription table dot execute async with the table operation of delete. Now what does it need? It wants the table entity, so that's where the subscription is going to come in. Right? And if that worked, so let's put a little bit of logging around this and say, let's cut that out of there and put this in here. And then if that didn't work, we'll put, yeah, it's not the best. Don't do this. Don't, don't, don't do this. Let's put some sensible error messages in the response. But for now, this is fine, right? Um, don't do as I do, do as I tell you. Isn't that what my mom used to say? Um, so if that worked, I want to return an OK result. So that would have deleted it, right? So I think that's all we need to do. So no, that's, that's not true at all. That's, that's, that's not true at all. Um, so this, the function that we originally uh, copied was the get subscription. So it had a function of get. Now we're doing a delete operation at this point. So we want this to be a delete rather than a get. And that will make it unique from any other at root. So we have a root here that was subscription user ID user uh, subscription ID. The get uses the same root, so we need to make it unique, and we're going to make it unique by using a different HTTP verb to do that operation. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and I'm going to run my API, and let's see what happens. Now, if this works, we should be able to run up Postman. So Postman is a utility tool for exercising APIs. There's lots of different ones around. Uh, I prefer Postman. It's the one that I've learned to play with. So it's the one, it's kind of my go-to one for anything like this. So if everything's worked over here in our Azure, uh, in our Azure, in our Azure Functions uh, setup, we should have a fourth URL now available, which is the delete subscription, which is here. And we do. So let's test out some of these things. I'm going to say no to that. Right, so let's put this up here a little bit. So this was our get for subscription one. So if we send that again, does that, does that work? Did beautiful, but we didn't have a. Hold on, let me test this properly. So this was for our get subscription is looking for user ID and so. Part of the conversation that we had last Monday was that ultimately we're not going to want to put this user ID and subscription ID onto the URL that we're using. We said that, that was a bad idea. We wouldn't add those into some sort of persisted session state. Uh, for now, we're appending those directly into the URLs. Uh, we won't do that eventually. So the other one for get subscriptions just takes the user ID that we're interested in. So let's, let's get Postman back up and running and say that uh, let's change the name of this. So this is going to be get subscription. Get subscriptions. No, get subscription. It's a singular get subscription. Okay. And then let's duplicate this so that we can create another one. And this one's going to be called get subscriptions. So our get subscriptions is going to want a user ID and that user ID is going to be this guy. So if we take if we take this, which is the user ID, and go back to Postman and put this in here and run that, that should give us the two entries that we had before. 
right? And then if we take this one, copy that and go over to here. Did I not change that to say get subscription? I thought I did. Oh, it's changing the same one. That's just annoying. Okay, let's... Mm. So let's go here and say save as... Let's create a new collection. Create a collection for DevGep. And we're going to give it a name of Get Subscriptions and we're going to say save to DevGep. Right. So let's take this one and say file save as. So in here, we're going to say that this one's called get subscription. Beautiful. So we've now got two separate ones. That's the dev get subscriptions. This one's going to be subscription. So first of all, let's grab this again. Let's make sure that this one's working the way we want it to as well. Copy that. Paste that into there. And then we're going to do slash with the subscription ID. Just going to be in there. So if we run that, we should get one. It's going to trigger our, that's fine. It's going to trigger a breakpoint. And we say, back to Postman. Then we get a single one. Okay, so these are working the way we want them to. Okay. So now, those were two get methods. So if we say duplicate, then this one is not going to be a get, this is going to be a delete. So we'll change the HTTP verb to be a delete, and then we'll say file save as into the dev get subscription, the dev collection called delete. So if we run this, let's set a breakpoint over here, make sure that we go into here, and if we say send, dun dun dun, Oh, right, so we're in a delete subscription. We have a reference to the subscriptions table. We have a re reference to that specific subscription. So if we go down here and say delete, it seemed to work. And if we say go, in Postman, we get a 200 response, which is what we wanted. And if we go back to get subscriptions and run that again, we should be back to having one entry, which we are. Good. And if we go back to here, which shouldn't have delete subscription. I haven't saved it. So let's call this get subscription again. If we run this one again, it should be back to essentially broken. It shouldn't return us anything. It says 404 not found. Good. Okay. So the only thing that's left then in Postman in Postman terms is I want another one for adding. Let's see if we can do we want to do that? Mm, that's kind of harder in Postman. Uh question from Martin in the chat room. Curious, is there a tool for generating swagger OPI open API definition for Azure functions? I have no idea, Martin. Don't don't know. Um, Mr. Azure Stroke Developer Technologies MVP doesn't seem to be in the chat room today. So I can't ask him either. Um, maybe? Don't know. I, I've never used Swagger, so I don't, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. Um, so I'm not the best person to ask. Okay. So we now have a delete subscription. I think what we want is to now have an edit subscription. So let's stop this running again. And let's add another Azure function. And this one's going to be called edit subscription. Right. And it's going to be an HTTP trigger. Okay. 
So the function name we changed before to use the new name of operator so that we can refactor things without having to update the magic string. And this time round, we're going to want to make this a put, right? So we've got, we've had, I'm missing a closing bracket up there. We've had the get HTTP method. We've had the post HTTP method, when that was when we added a new one. So the add subscription was the post operation. The get subscription was the get method. For the delete, we had the delete. And for the edit, we're going to use the, the put. So that's kind of the four uh, HTTP verbs and how they map to the kind of standard CRUD operations, right? So again, in the same way that we did get subscriptions, actually, I was just going to borrow it from the delete. So in the same way that we had the uh, a reference to the actual subscription that we're interested in, I'm going to pull that in so that we have both a reference to the the actual subscription entry, entity and the subscription table. So let's pull both of these things in. And then we need a root. We're missing a root. And the root is going to be the same as what we've got here. Let's just copy all of that again. And we'll say that. Okay. Uh, a lot of this boilerplate we can get rid of just now. And this is C sharp HTTP function processed a request for edit subscription. What's Martin saying? Found something. Martin's found that we can do. We can do Swagger on Azure Functions according to this blog post. Uh, while I'm opening up that, Martin, I have a question. Uh, what is the correct HTTP status code for an update operation? What is what is that? Oh, that's my magic gif. We don't need that today. Not yet, anyway. We can close him. I'm going to close the other tabs. Introducing Swagger UI on Azure Functions. Disclaimer, this post is purely a personal opinion, not representing or affiliating my employers. Perfect. What version of Azure Functions? So there's a NuGet package. Uh, confirming metadata for OpenAPI. Lots of good stuff there. Rendering an OpenAPI document. Looks oh, good. So then, oh, okay, so this would give us a URL that would then provide the information about what is available on our API. So so this would be important. This would be important if we were going to be exposing this API to everyone to use it. So I'm assuming that something like Swagger and OpenAPI are for essentially providing the metadata to the end user for to know how to call the API that we're using. However, we're not going to be exposing this API. So this API is very much an internal one that the ASP.NET Web API project is going to be using, but we're not going to be exposing this to the wider world because it's part of the the, the IP, the, the intellectual property that is the DevGet project, which is highly secret at the minute. Um, so no, I don't think we need this right now, but it's good to know that we can do this, but I don't think we need it right now. Or, or you're saying just to test it. No need for Postman to test your API. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying that this, or oh, this would give me a UI for actually exercising those methods as well. I see. Okay, so that's more interesting. That's more interesting. Okay. I could see how that could be. So th this is the, once the open API document, you can now time to build the Swagger UI. And okay, I could see how that could be useful. So we may play with that later, or I may play with that offline once I've got everything up and running. So that's good to know. 
That's good to know. I'll leave that page open. Okay, so what we're going to do here then is say, ooh, I should have had something like this when I did my delete. I'm going to copy this and put this into my delete operation because we didn't have that. We should have said not found. So if subscription is null, we're going to not find it. Same in my edit. So the first thing we're going to do here is say if the subscription is null, we're going to return. Otherwise, we are going to do what we did before. We're going to say copy and we're going to paste, but rather than do a delete here, we are going to do a replace operation. So we're replacing the current subscription in the database or the Azure storage with this new subscription that we've just passed through. And then if that works, we're going to return an OK. And if it fails, we're going to return a boom again. Don't do this. We're, this is testing code. We would put some actual error message in there at some point. But this would give us the edit subscription, which is using the put. So this is where I need to figure out how to actually send the subscription along for the ride. So, um, no, yes, no, hmm. That's not going to work. No, feel free to tell me that I'm being silly. This is not going to work. This is replacing. This is just replacing the. The this is this is never going to work. What do we do in the add? We actually need the new subscription. So that's coming from the request. Yes. So we need to do this. We need to copy this. So we don't need the subscription. So this is just going to be confusing. Mm, no, it's good to test that it's I'm going around in circles here. So we do want the subscription because we want to test to see that it's been found properly. And then if it has been found, we're going to read the content from the current request. And that's failing. Why is that failing? Well, that's because the well, we've already got a subscription, so let's call this the updated subscription from the data. And then this is going to be the updated subscription. Why does... Oh, I remember, because in here we've got... No, oh, it was something to do with a different type. It was a request message rather than a request. That's probably going to need a new using statement, which it did. That gave us that. Okay. And then let's just have a look to see what other results we have in here. So we have a not found redirect status unauthorized let's put this as an okay object result and again we will put in the let's re let's return the updated description there we go fine so in postman what we need to send is the equivalent JSON. So when we did our get, we had this. So let's grab this guy, copy, and we're going to say duplicate this tab, and we're going to say save as add subscription, and then we call it add subscription. We don't want this things at the end here do we? What does add subscription? Add subscription had a root which was just subscription which is what that is. It's going to want a post 
and then the body is going to be let's put this in here we're not going to know the row key we're going to give any of that stuff and then because Martin was talking let's put this in here and his partition key is going to be that and I need something I need something on the header that says not application what's the word what's the thing I'm looking for you don't have one yet you're getting a little bit ahead of yourself <laughs> um, content type is that the one I'm looking for application JSON is what we want there so let's save that and let's go into our add subscription and see if we get something so we can send that as a post no why did that not work oh hold on invalid JSON save that and send it again because we're not running feel free to tell me I'm being silly I, I will not be offended I'm actually going to run the API so that it's actually there and then we can exercise it uh, let's run this I think you're right there Martin not supporting trailing comments, commas in JSON is a million dollar mistake I think you're absolutely correct so back to postman and let's say send did that work oh did something okay so it's coming to add subscription blah -de blah -de blah let's read the content so our data should be some raw JSON at the minute let's deserialize that oh that didn't work oh of course I don't have the exception message that's kind of This is it. Um, where's our logger? We're going to say log dot error. Log dot log error. Um, make this ex. What does this thing take? Does this take an exception? Event ID system exception. Ex unable to add subscription subscription why there we go why did that fail oh no hmm I know why I know why I think I know why I might know why yeah Let's let's test that out, shall we? So we're coming here again. We say data and we say deserialize, and it went boom because cannot deserialize the current JSON array into a subscription because the type. Oh, really? That's not what I thought it was, but I don't know why why it is. Because this is an array, this is a JSON array. Whereas I only want a single object, which is this thing. Save that, send it one more time. And then it might fail with the error I thought I was going to get. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Let's see where we get to. Send. There we go. Bump. Oh, then it worked. So this subscription has. Yeah, it doesn't have a row key. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the that's the unwritten code, Martin. Uh, so if I do, will this allow me to add that? See, that's not going to work because it needs a row key. And then this will have a bad request so that that's the, that's the error I thought we were going to get so right now we're going directly to the API 
So the API expects that there's a row key present. So the row key we decided was going to be the subscription ID. Now, that at the minute is created at the website. So we go and look at the website code, which was here. Then we, when we added it here in our controller, then we set it here. This one. We did this. We set the row key to be a new GUID. So because we're not doing that yet, because we're one step further along, we're going to need to add that. So if we go back to where we were doing this, we need this guy. But it also needs to be unique. So we'll throw this in here. And what we'll do in a highly random act, we'll change that 9 to an 8. Right, don't ever do that either. It's just bad form. Um, save that and run this. And if this, this should work, and this will allow us to add a new subscription, and then we can test our edit function. Right? Oh, I pushed the wrong button on the wrong Visual Studio instance. This is not the one that we came here for. Stop that. Where's our other Visual Studio? It's this one. This is our API. And if we exercise that, we should be able to then call our add. Okay. Send that in. Send that in. And then. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right. And we return the subscription that we've got back. So that will have returned our. There we go. Beautiful. Hmm. Hmm. That doesn't have everything. We should maybe return result there. What does result have? I'm curious. Yeah, we probably don't want to return result there. Uh, we don't. We don't want to return the subscription because the subscription isn't fully populated. The fully populated subscription dot so what's the result? That's a table result. So that table result if we were to cast that as hmm, let's do this far inserted subscription is equal to JSON convert dot deserialize object of subscription to be that guy why do you not cannot convert object to string I didn't think I was asking you to do that Why is that not? What am I doing wrong? Deserialize object in what? I'm so confused right now. Deserialize object of type subscription with result dot result what are we doing wrong oh no because that's an object hmm does that have? I may have to look at that now. Hold on. Let's put a breakpoint here. We'll do that again. So now in our table storage, 
we go back to our subscriptions and hit refresh, we should have one that says Martin. So I'm going to delete that. Oh, right, Martin's gone. Oh, it's just so we don't want to deserialize it. We should be able to just cast it. Is that what we want? Let's do that. Let's try that. We don't need to deserialize. It's not JSON anymore. Let's see if that works. So we get in here and we do that. So result is a table result. Result is an object. So we just cast it. So if we were to go here and do subscription uh, result dot result. What does that give us? There we go. And then that should be fully populated with all the bits and pieces in it. Right, fine. So that that's the wrong one again. So this here we want to do as subscription result dot result. Right. So one more time, because that will have added Martin again. So let's delete that one more time. Delete that Martin object. Spin this up, and then we should be able to see whether our edit code works. Long-winded way of getting around there, but we got there in the end. Hopefully. Blah, blah, blah. Back to here. Click on our add. Then we do this, and then we do that. That returns, and what we get back in here is what we have down here. So this has everything in it, which is what we want. Yes. Now I'm wondering whether I just had to move that up. I'm now wondering whether this wasn't down there before. And Martin does indeed have a description. Let's save that. And let's have another one. And this one, we're going to say save as edit subscription. And we're going to save it into dev gap. This is going to be our put. And we're going to hit save. So in here, we are going to put the body again. And in here, we're going to change this to Patrick. And we're going to hit save. <laughs> Thought you might like that. So in order for our edit to work, we need to know the user ID and the subscription that we're passing it to. So that is where there's a slight duplication at the minute. We'll not worry too much about that. But let's grab this guy and append it to the URL here. And then we'll grab the subscription ID, which is this guy. And we'll put that in there and we'll hit save. And then let's put a breakpoint in our edit, which is here. And in Postman, we'll hit send, and we should hit this breakpoint, which we do. We're going to hit F10. We've got a subscription. We're going to deserialize that object, and then the updated subscription is going to have Patrick in it, which it does. And then we're going to replace. I had a moment there where I thought that wasn't going to work and it indeed didn't work. I think I've broken something or I think I haven't done something correctly. Let's see what this does. So we've still got Martin in there, which we do. That's good. I'm thinking that this thing is wrong. But I'm not entirely sure why. 
So let's send this one more time and see what the exception is. So we're stepping through, we get there and we say no. What do we get back? Replace requires an E tag, which may be a wild card. Interesting. Needs an E tag. Interesting. So it's talking about this thing. Copy. And I'm going to put this into here. Now, we, in our actual application, we'll know what the e tag is because, well, we just will. Because we'll have that. But for now, I'm going to put that in as a star, which is a wild card, hopefully. It's a wild card for a lot of things. I'm assuming it's a wild card in the context of this Azure table storage. But in our actual application, we will have fetched that subscription that we're deleting or editing, and we'll know what the e-tag is. So we will be able to send that in the request. It's just for this exercising of the API, we don't have that information. So if I do this again, and F10 through here, then when we deserialize it, the updated subscription, where to go here, has a star, a wildcard e tag. E tag is for, yes, it, it will be, yes. I, well, that's my suspicion, yes. Um, so by putting in a wildcard, putting in a wild card basically says just have at it but in the context of the actual running application yes the e-tag would be um, for concurrency control so if you if you had a reference to an old subscription and someone else on the same application had updated it before you push the update button then yes that's where the e-tag would come in so I'm going to say F10 this again <sighs> now I'm returning the updated subscription. So I'm curious now what I see in Postman. That's so we updated it to Patrick. It does have it in there. So it did know about it. So we don't need that extra cast then. So where I added in that extra cast here, I don't think we need that. I think that is just subscription. So I'm going to go back to this. And I'm going to test that thought process out. I want to see if that's actually going to be. So now if we go back to our table storage and we hit refresh where we had Martin before, we should now have Patrick. Look at that. Happy days. So let's do this one more time. And while I'm here, I'm going to delete these older ones because they're not tied to the current user. Hello, Kim. How are we doing? Indeed, the party can now get started that Kim's here. Uh, so what important bits have I missed? Um, not much. <laughs> um, not much at all. Uh, I am working on extending out the uh, API surface. So uh, last Monday, we got to a point where we had two get methods and an add. Now I have added in the delete, and we're just kind of working on the edit subscription to make sure that we have that working. And we've also created some... Uh, methods within Postman for exercising the API. So we've now got one for the two gets, the delete, the add, and the uh, edit. So we were literally just uh, testing out whether we can add in a new one and then edit it. <laughs> and Martin's saying there that he did have a subscription for something that he doesn't know what the subscription is for yet, but then I gave it away to Patrick, which is exactly what I did. So let's do a test of Bob here. So I'm going to send in a subscription with Bob as the recipient. And I'm going to let that run through. And we go back to Postman. And the result that we see, so it did. So we didn't need to do that cast. So that's good to know. And then if we 
go back to our edit, which is here, and we say that we want to update it. Let's put it back to Martin so he's happy. So we're going to update Bob to be Martin. We're going to send that in. <laughs> Um, yes, he is. So Bob, Bob is my go-to username for any sort of variable name or username or just generally whatever. I don't know why. It's it's simple to type. It's easy to type. And then if I have two people, it's normally Bill. So it's Bill and Bob, and those are my <laughs> go-to variable names. <laughs> um. I'm not going to fall for that, Martin. So Patrick tried that earlier. We're not at the point of telling people what the subscriptions are for yet. But rest assured, early uh, beta testers will likely come from people who've been involved in the streams. So you're in a good position to be one of the first beta testers for said application that hasn't been announced yet. So if I refresh this, we should have a new subscription that is it was Bob, because when it was first added, and then it changed to Martin as a result of the new Azure function that we have. So if we go back to here, and we go back to our get subscriptions for this user, then we should return to. Good. Okay, so we, we now have a API that includes all of the kind of four CRUD methods. So the, so the create, read, update, delete, they are now all set up. Now, one thing that Martin did mention earlier was that there is, or there would appear to be a Swagger UI that we can use for Azure Functions. So we may have to look, or I may have to look into how that works and how to set it up because uh, Martin's pointing out that it provides a user interface for exercising the, uh, the, the methods. So rather than having to do it in Postman, which this is my go-to tool for doing this thing, uh, we could have used the Swagger UI for doing that. So we'll have to play with that. Uh, notification. Definitely subscribe to Tier 1. Thank you very much for uh, renewing your subscription, Matthias. I appreciate it. You're currently on a three-month streak, seemingly. Thank you very much. Uh, and Kim's saying, for generating temporary data, I usually use GenFoo instead of figuring out some... Okay, I'm going to have to go and figure it. Google, what is GenFoo? GenFoo. Random Googling for names. Mr. James GenFoo? GenFoo is a library you can use to generate realistic, realistic test data. It is composed of several property filters. Fillers. I can populate. Pop oh, look at that. <coughs> and indeed, on genfoo.io, everybody was. <laughs> I see what you did there. Everybody was genfoo fighting. Uh -huh. Oh, so you give it a class, and then it'll just give you some stuff. Ah, oh, look at that. Download as JSON. Um, that could be useful. Okay, I'm going to leave this open here as well because that's something that could be very useful. Okay, so so Matthias, it looks like Matthias is in the chat room. So uh, we had a question earlier, but I think we found the answer, uh, and that was regarding <coughs> the Swagger UI and whether it was possible to do that for Azure Functions, and it seems like it is. So where we are is we now have a fully functioning Azure Function API surface that has got uh, add subscription, get subscription and subscriptions, edit subscription and delete subscription. So with those in place, I'm just I'm just catching you up right now, Matthias. Uh, with those in place, I can go back to our website and in the website, we can start stubbing out the service methods for exercising those. And then we can start looking at filling out the UI for actually allowing the edit and the delete of those uh, functions, uh, subscriptions. 
Swagger works well with V1, not so much with Azure Functions V2. Oh, okay. So maybe we can't do that. Right, so let's close some of these down and then let's start stubbing out our subscriptions service. So right now we've got a method for get subscriptions and get subscription and we have uh, add subscription and we're going to want a task of just a task I think task delete subscription and that's going to take a subscription which is going to be subscription right and then we're going to want a task of subscription which is going to be update subscription up oh, so what to do update subscription which is going to take a subscription which is going to be subscription take subscription perfect not even see now you're just throwing terms around Kim that again swashbuckle really uh, so that's our interface extended to include those two new API methods that we created and that's going to cause an error here because we haven't stubbed them out so if we say implement interface we will get two new uh, methods added one is for the delete and one is for the update and then let's have a look at what we're doing so we're going to say await http client where did that go oh that wants to be an async so we're going to want to put async on here we're going to want to put async on here and we're going to await our http client dot this is our delete so we want to say delete Oh, what does it want? No. No. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Yes. I think this is what we want to do. So in here, we're not going to actually pass a subscription through to the delete. It's just going to be the URL. So that's what it wants in here. So in here, we've already got a base URI, which is API slash subscription. So we just need to add on the uh, user ID. We want to do this, basically. I'm going to copy that guy. So the questions for consistency, I should probably... Um, I'm thinking. For consistency, I probably want to pass this not as... Let's make it the same. So this is going to be user ID, and this is going to be subscription ID. And let's take that off of there. And let's go here and go back to our subs our interface. Put this in here. And then that's gonna be subscription. Passing in the user ID in that one. And that's gonna be delete async. And assuming that that works, I'm going to return, I'm just going to return that point because everything worked. No error handling, no nothing. So obviously that needs to be uh, filled out at some point, but that can be a to-do, don't do this. So that's us doing delete. 
what we're saying here. Sorry. Uh, yes, the manual generator is what I linked to, linked to Gary in the beginning of the stream. Some helper and you get and a couple of attributes and two endpoints, one for JSON and one for the UI. You can use API management to generate for you, but that's a bit pricey. <laughs> but you'll be filthy rich when this project finishes, so who cares? Absolutely. Uh, no, he isn't. Now he deletes the one he gives. <laughs> what can I say? Right. Um, so we've just deleted that, and now we need an update. So the update is going to be an await on the HTTP client again, and that is going to be uh, uh, put JSON async. That's where we want one of those. Want one of those guys, and that wants to be put to a URI, and then we're going to put the subscription. Boom. And then let's just keep it with a theme to do. Don't do this. And then that is going to be the subscription that we get back. So var result equals that. Return. Hmm. That one's not as bad. That's not what we wanted, the return result. But that wants to be a task of some description. So we want to do kind of implicitly type that to be um, task of subscription. Oh, have I not awaited something? Oh, I need to do something like this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And then let's make this response var subscription, and we'll call this updated subscription. And then here we're going to return the updated subscription. Beautiful. Sneaky. I'm not sneaky. I'm I'm hurt and offended with that. There's a community package for open API. Was that what you're referring to? Um the one that we, we were referring to, Matthias, was this blog post, which from 2019 was introducing Swagger UI on Azure functions. So Yes, exactly that one. Okay, so back to this. Uh, I need a URI in here. So I, now in our Postman script, when we did an update, we posted to the user ID and subscription. So I'm going to need to take, not that one, I'm going to take this one because I want all of them and I'm going to put this into here but that's not going to work so I'm going to make this be the subscription dot partition key and then this subscription ID is going to be the subscription dot row key I think and then we pass the subscription. So a little bit of duplication there that we may need to <laughs> I've just seen a call from Martin there. That's not his full title, Martin. We need to give him his full title. It's no longer just Mr. Azure MVP. It's Mr. Azure and Developer Technologies MVP. It's planned to arrive baked in the box. In V2, that would be great. Working with Postman or similar is error prone, but they also recommend API management there. So I'm, I'm assuming API M is API management. Okay, so with those things in play, we should now be able to go to our controller. So in our controller, 
here, we had methods for adding. So this was our this was the view that we returned, which was the add. Then we had a post, which was the delete. So now, now this is where I'm going to need some help, because, yeah. What do we want to do here? So right now we've got some, we've got an add view. Do I need an edit view? And if I do, or 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 does do I change the add view to be a multi multi purpose so it does both the edit and the add or do I keep them separate? And the second one, the second question that I have is how do I make the delete operation work? So I have it I currently have a delete button. But how do I make that button do a delete operation? So let me think about this. So in our index, we currently have an action link that is delete, delete. So what does action link do? So Kim saying, I would say create a partial that would have common values for add and edit, then use that partial in both the add. I like I like that thought process, so we can definitely do that. I'm interested in the delete to start with. So let's I'm going to stick with the delete just now. So my question there is how do I make this delete call the delete action that I'm going to add into my controller. So I'm planning on adding a new so let me just stub this out. I'm planning on doing public async task i action result delete which takes in a subscription which takes in a subscription right and then I'm going to return a redirect to action in the same way that we did before. Redirect to action index. I'm going to do that, right? But what I want to do is I'm going to put an HTTP delete on there. I think is what I want to do. Yeah, without using a different view. I just wanted to go direct, if it's possible. I don't know if it is. So, why is that complaining? Lax and a wait, that's fine. And then in here, what I want to do, I don't I didn't really want to do that. You can redirect, right? HTML. See, that's, that was my, So the so, so the question is, should we do it in JavaScript with a, a, a an XHR request, or should we do it as a post operation and then call the delete function? Mateus is saying no JavaScript that would expose the API. You're absolutely correct. So you would want it to be a post then. So in here, we're going to hit have post. And then it's going to be our delete operation. And then in here, we are going to await the subscription service dot delete subscription with, oh, it wants the user ID and the subscription ID, not a subscription. So 
I can make that happen though. So let's change this slightly. So let's do this string as user ID, string as subscription ID, subscription ID. And then in here, we're going to put the user ID. And then in here, we're going to put the subscription ID. Um, dev need only if you call the Azure functions from JavaScript. You could call the MVC handler through JavaScript instead. But I think I'm, I think I'm inclined to agree though with Mateus here. Yes, I could call a method that I expose here from JavaScript, but I think it might be better to just do this. So this is an action link, which is action name. That should work, I think. And then what I need to pass in is some information from here. So this is going to be user ID is equal to item dot the user ID is the partition key and the subscription ID is equal to the item dot row key. Oh, really? I was really hoping that that was going to... Mm, I was kind of hoping that was going to work. I was kind of hoping that was going to work. So if I do in here, and then I say add a view. So that's what does it give me if I do a delete here? Let's just see what this gives me. Let's just have a look. View name, let's just call it delete. Sure. Let's see what it scaffolds out for us. And we can maybe borrow some code from it. Du -du 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 -du. Are you sure you want to delete this? Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Form, action, delete, input type. Blah, blah, blah. ASP action back to list. So then are you sure you want to delete this? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not actually doing anything with it. <laughs> so hold on. So let's undo all of this stuff that I did in here. Delete, 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 delete. Okay. Let's just see what this does. And then we'll need to spin up our API as well. Well, it won't go to the right place at the minute, but I guess we could tinker with that, he says.
Let's see what happens here. Let's see what we get. Because we're at the minute, what we have is never going to get into. What we have is never going to get into here. There's no way that it's going to get into there. I'm going to set a breakpoint there anyway, but it's never going to get there. So if I log in here, and I log in with GitHub. And I click on subscriptions. And I'm going to, where's Martin's one? This one. Delete. I didn't expect that to fail. Um, I I would have expected that to work. I'll put it back, Martin. Don't worry about it. I'll put it back. Um, hold on. If I click on this, it goes into here. Oh, hmm. no. Where's my ad? Why? Why does that page not load? Because there's no root associated with that. Because we're not returning the view. Because, 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 okay, it's all coming back. It's all coming back. So in here, we don't have a root. So we need a public I action result that is delete. And then I'm going to say return view. Beautiful. Let's run this again. I see what Matthias did in the comments there. See what you did there. Took me a, took me a second, but I got there. Got there in the end. Let's see what we get now. So let's log back in again with GitHub. We click on subscriptions and we click on delete Martin's one. Oh. But we haven't passed in anything. We haven't passed in a model, so it hasn't been able to populate it. So we need to go back to the list. Back to the list takes us here. Okay, so far so good. So I need to pass in. It's expecting an object to be passed into it. So oh, we can't just return a view. We need to return. Um, where do I want to do that? In here. We need to pass in the something. We need to pass in the something here, and then in our controller, we need to grab it. So in our service, when we are getting a subscription, we need the user ID in the subscription. So That takes us back to putting the user ID 
and the subscription into the URL, which hmm, I can do that. That would mean user ID should be allowed to be. Yes, it should. So that okay. So that one we can get fine. So it shouldn't be, in the, but the subscription would have to be in the URL. So over here in our index, we could add in the subscription ID, and that would be the item dot key. Yes, still haven't got those in my head yet. Right, so then in our controller here, in here, I think I can just say subscription ID here. I'm, and I'm in the weeds here a little bit. And Kim's just come out with a gist. We'll come back to that. async var where would that be we haven't actually used that yet var subscription is equal to await http no subscription service dot get subscription and then that is going to be this guy, copy that, stick that in there. This is going to be user identifier dot value subscription ID subscription ID copy paste and then that is going to return me a view of the subscription. Why are you complaining? Why, why, why are you complaining? Um. What do you want me to do with you? Can't just do that, can I? Let's bring up what Kim's talking about here. Could perhaps remove the ID and the value from the inputs and use ASP4 instead. Then, okay. The same task in the method. Is that all I've done? Uh, I see. Thank you, Kim. So let's see if this runs. And confirm. So that's what it would give us the. Okay. Once more into the breach. So we log in with GitHub. We click on subscriptions. We click delete on Martin's one. That takes us into here. Our subscription ID has been found. Look at that. We're going to click on that. We're going to click on that. That gives us a subscription. 
Oh, it's got my subscription in it. It does. And then if I return that, then we get this populated. It's quite a lot of deletes going on here. <laughs> Are you sure you want to delete this? Yes. That then takes me into this delete method. Look at that. And it has a user ID and a subscription that didn't have anything in it. So what did that send me? This would have sent me an entire for that, an entire object. So I can do something special. We're in, <laughs> we can do something special here in the subscription controller. So this is not this. Where does what user ID come from? This thing is now going to be a subscription. I think. So this here. <laughs> um. I think we want to put this in here again so that we're always doing the operation based on the currently logged in user. This delete subscription wants the user ID, which is user identifier dot value. And then this subscriptions dot row key this one right let's try this again but I think it's not something special I have to do here to say model from form or is it just going to figure that out for me I seem to remember Kim talking about that. Or was that on the API side of things? Maybe, maybe just made that up. Log in. Log in. I think we should have a helper for that, Matthias. Yes, I agree. So if I delete Martin's one again, then we've already proved that this one works. We haven't yet deleted this one. We're gonna delete it some at some point soon though. We're gonna delete it. So is this populated now? No. That didn't work. It could work. So how do I get so the delete form is submitting it's doing an action delete, and I would have. Exp it's not actually doesn't actually contain anything. So, or do I just do that then? Do I just give it an input that is the the current subscription ID? Is that what I need to do? Yeah, no, that's what. I, that's the conclusion I've just come to, Kim. I think we've got to the same point. So let's do this differently then. Let's put this back to string subscription ID. And then why did you suddenly delete that? Oh. Hmm. But that should be different because it's a post, right? I had a hidden, yeah. I had a hidden input uh, with the subscription ID, yes. Um, why is that complaining? 
because it should be different based on the attribute, right? Or do I have to rename this? Yeah, I, I, I know it's the same signature, but I thought it was smart enough to know. So I can call this delete subscription then. I'll need to change the form to have that as well. And then in here, we're going to put, save me some typing, I think we can borrow some from here. Grab this guy. Copy that. value is subscription ID so this wants to be I want to get that from the model so in here I should be able to do this right row key. Do I want to do that? I think I do. So in here what Matthias was saying was action name. This is an attribute. So this would be delete. That would mean that my here goes back to this Kim saying I can use ASP for row key. Well, let's give that a try then. I think I prefer that. Can't copy that for some reason. So IDs there, it's the same. You're saying ASP4. Oh, look at that. ASP4. Oh, look at that. Okay, that I much prefer that. Much prefer that. Okay, let's give it a bottle. Let's see what we get. So we get to subscriptions. Martin subscription's still there because we haven't actually been able to delete it yet. So let's say delete. And we're going to say delete. No. Hmm. Still saying no there. What did I do wrong? Subscription, subscription ID. Subscription ID. Kim saying, if you rename the parameter in the controller method, you can also drop the ID for the input tag. If you rename the parameter in the controller method, you can also drop the ID for the input tag. Rename it to what, Kim? Rename it to what? Because that didn't work. And I thought... Subscription ID. Subscription ID. Let's rename the same. Okay. Rename this to be Roki. Let's test that out. Oh, 
run. Let's have a look and see what this is doing here. Subscriptions. Delete. Let's actually have a little look and see what's in here, shall we? More tools, developer tools. Let's put this on the bottom. We're going to grab this guy. ID. Got a capital R. But let's let's click the button. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So then, if we do this. And we say, so that's now got our username and our subscription in it. And I'm going to say, that then hit my API. So it's able to find that res entry. And it's just went ahead and deleted it. So the Martin entry is no longer there. Look at that. Martin entry is gone. I feel we should put it back. So let's do a create new with Martin. Create. And lots of stuff happening. That will return us back to the list. We've got a Martin one. Martin's back, but we did delete it. So now we need an edit. So the edit doesn't go anywhere currently and neither does the details, because we don't have either of those. So now, let's stop this. Oh, that was the wrong one. I want to put my API back together. I want to stop this one. Let's get the edit up and running. So, let's go to Views, Subscriptions, and I want to add a new view with edit and I'm going to allow the editing of a subscription and we're going to call it edit see what I did there? call it edit add so we're going to need a controller we're going to want one similar to this. I'm going to copy that. I I thought so, Kim. I'm glad that we're on the same page. I, I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> I'm going to make this edit. I'm going to find my user. I'm going to get the subscription. Details should be called. The devil's in the details. So I've got an edit. I'm returning my subscription to the edit page. And then we're going to want a method that is similar to this guy. So let's grab this. Action name is going to be edit didn't like that edit this is going to be edit this is going to be edit no it's not oh, it's going to be update a little bit of an inconsistency there probably going to have to fix that Hmm. 
what does it send me? Probably doesn't send me anything. Or does it? It does look. So it's submitting me everything in here. Okay. So let's put this down here. And at the minute, this edit is going to have everything. It does submit the full model. So will that give me, will that know how to do it? Will it be able to give me this? Let's see, shall we? Oh, that's the wrong one. Put that back. That's the wrong one. It's the one down here. So now, need to think about what you would like to allow to submit. I don't disagree with that. At the minute, the only thing that we're allowing them to change is the... Um, whatever that Martin is. So what is Martin currently? Martin is currently the recipient. So that's the only thing that we really want them to be able to change. But I'm still going to need the things like the e-tag. So my question is whether or not I am allowed or whether it will give me that or whether I will have to reconstitute it from the individual properties. Because I'm going to want them. We did that earlier in Postman, Matthias. But in terms of knowing that there hasn't been an edit uh, since the page was reloaded, we felt that uh, having the e-tag be exactly what it was when it was fetched would allow for concurrent operations was what we were thinking. Oh, hold on. Oh, so the, that service wants the user ID then. So at the minute, so we want this, we want to change this slightly. So that user ID takes in the user ID and the subscription. Do we? I don't dislike that idea. I don't dislike that idea, Kim, at all, having a view model. So the things that we would want to bring forward would be... At the minute, it would just be the recipient. And there's a cloud table method to merge an object. So you weren't here for that part, Matthias, but when we did that part on our update here, what we did was to do a replace operation. Are you suggesting that we don't want that just now? You're saying that this should be merge. Oh, 
Okay, so hold on a second. Or use the bind attribute on the parameter, was the suggestion from Kim. Then just have recipient be param for now. So what that's saying is... So here... Okay, so hold on. Let's let's start start at the beginning. So within this edit subscription, we're saying that we just want to have the recipient. Is that is that what I understood? So you're saying in my edit subscription method, we have a string that is the recipient, correct? Or incorrect? Okay, so with that recipient, how do I, where do I get the rest of the subscription from? Because I still need a subscription object to set, to, well, or rather, currently my update subscription method still needs a subscription object. Right. Okay, so now we're getting closer. So subscription subscription ID. So are you suggesting that I, in this update subscription method, use the user ID and subscription <coughs> to locate the object and then set the recipient and then save it down or something else? Could be a dictionary in API. What does that mean? Could be a dictionary. As in, at this point in time, we only have one thing that we're changing, but we may want to pass in multiple things. So a string dictionary, a dictionary of string of string, and then for each one of those, loop through and set the properties on the new subscription that we find. Is that what we're getting at? Yes, and you're sending me a link. What are you sending me a link to? This is Cosmos DB. Okay, so we're not, <laughs> so we're not going to a dynamic table entity class in Cosmos DB. You could, and then Kim's saying, you could have HTTP POST ID public async task of I async result edit string ID from body string recipient and where's that magic string ID coming from because at the minute would that something we would Let's let's build this up a little bit. So this was the thing that I was thinking about earlier. From body string recipient, fine. HTTP POST ID I'll give it a try can I can I make that subscription ID just so that it's crystal clear subscription ID 
I'm missing something here. Same idea as the edit get method. It would be put, but it's a form post. So it's posting the page, and then it's a, a put to the API. So the service is doing a put, but the post is to the form. OK. So here we're getting subscription ID from there. Fine. Then in here, we want that plus the subscription ID. And then Okay, can we come back to that? Let's let's come back to that. Cause I I want to make sure that we are all on the same page here. So new dictionary of string of string and then in here we're going to put recipient and then in here we're going to put recipient and we're going to close that out. Dictionary isn't found so let's add dictionary in. Oh, I need something around here, don't I? Probably need another one of these guys. Beautiful. That update subscription has nothing like that. <laughs> so let's change that. So string subscription ID. Oops, subscription ID. Dictionary of string string and that's going to be object properties sure that's going to be broken here completely so this wants to be string user id string subscription id dictionary string a string object properties post as async something or other so this here is back to just user ID. This here is back to the subscription ID. And then the payload data is going to be, let's just, let's, I'm just going to assume that that serializes correctly. Object properties. Oh, I might need to do two JSON or something, but let's, let's throw that over the wire. Right, then over here in my update, which is this one, close all but this, you can go away too. Um, this is no longer a subscription then. This is now object properties. We haven't deserialized. 
do I need to do a two JSON or something on this? Or I don't no, you can't do it. There's no two JSON. So what do I do on there to JSON convert? Is it that? Dot serialize object. Beautiful. Loving it. Nobody's objected so far. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with this. <laughs> um dictionary. Dictionary. Oh, that didn't work. Dictionary. That wants a thingy out of there. Mm, okay, object properties. And then we need to do something with the something. So we found the subscription, and now we want to set the subscription. So we need to say for each var. I'm glad I'm not alone to say it out loud whenever. <laughs> Object property in uh, object properties. Object properties. I don't really want to have to reflect into this, no, Matthias. I don't really want to have to do that. What would be your recommendation here? Because I don't want to have to do that. Dynamic table entity. Oh, hold on. Var entity. New dynamic table entity. Partition key, row key, e tag. New diction. You're saying that I could... No. Okay. That... This... You're gonna have to... You're gonna have to run this one past me because... The var entity... What do you mean? Var entity equals new dynamic table entity. Yes. Okay, I've got a new dynamic table entity. What do you want me to do with that? Params. Subscription dot partition key. Subscription dot row key. Subscription dot e tag. And then it wants a new dictionary of string and entity property. I don't have one of those. But are you saying that this is what I should have put in here? And then I would just pass in object properties. But I don't, that's, that's not the same type. So this would want to be entity property for that to work. If you're you're talking finish now, that's not gonna help anybody. That's not gonna help man their beast. So then we're saying that okay, let's get rid of this puppy. 
so then you said that there was a merge operation. Merge? What does it want? <laughs> Entity. Close. What does it complain about? Clearly missing something at the end here. Beautiful. Uh, I th think we might come back to that, uh, Kim. Not entirely sure if this is actually going to do anything, but let's let's wing it. I need to go back over here. And this is no longer a string of that. This is now a string of entity property. But I'm not gonna have that. Well, one thing at a one thing at a time with this. Because I don't have entity property over here. Oh no, I do. But what I don't know that's my service. So this here is going to change to be entity property. Right, <coughs> and now over here, this is not string, this is entity property as well. Sure, best overloaded method has some invalid. Oh, I see. Okay. New entity property of that. Okay. I'm going a lot in faith here so far. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's go back a little, a few steps. E tag should be a parameter too if you want to validate it. And a property to where? A property in the API? So what do you mean by that? Let's go back to that point. E tag should be a parameter too if you want to validate that. Um, in the dictionary you mean? Or where? Pretty much, Kim, at this point, yes. In dynamic entity. I did. So you're talking about this. So currently I have this and then object properties. Or are you talking about something else? But that's current fetched e tag. Correct, it is. So what you're saying is uh, 
but at the minute as a URL property, so I I, I get that information. Or where would that come from? Or pass it in the dictionary and remove. Okay, hold on a second then. This is getting complicated now. Getting complicated, people. Okay, let's, let's break some of this out. So, cut that and say var object properties is equal to that. Right? This wants to be object properties from body string e tag. So then here, let's put this down a bit. And let's do this and say, oh no, I'm, I'm putting it in now. You said, you said new entity property e tag, right? No, style club hasn't been added yet. Shh. Shh. Um, so that's then passed through here. That then is in here. So then we have to say uh, var e tag is equal to object properties e tag object properties dot remove e tag it's not gonna let me do that is it it's gonna want one of those beautiful <laughs> pretty much um is that an item potent and is that does that return the object, no, it does actually just remove it. Fine. So then we say if uh, e tag is not equal to subscription dot e tag uh, return conflict result. Boom. E tag is a Oh, that wants to be a string now, doesn't it? String e tag. Oh, come on. Cast is redundant. Oh, it's redundant. Why? So, string value. Beautiful. Not equal to that. Conflict result. Oh, new conflict result. Okay, cooking my gas so far. <coughs> we're not even going to do anything that. No, we're not. We're, no, no. Right. So having done all of that work, having done all of that work, is any of this actually going to do anything? <laughs> so break point here. Um, edit subscription takes the. I've got a, something wrong here. Initializes a new instance of blah blah blah. What's your problem? Oh, that. that hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, 
Right. So having done all of that work, I'm still not clear on where this subscription ID is coming from. So I think what we need in the edit page, which is here, we need to, for in order for that to work, we need to submit the form to, so this is where um, Kim's coming in. So this subscription ID wants to be on the form submission now, right? There's no oh, the form's going to be back up here. So form ASP action edit. So is there another property? That I want to put in here or how does that look where did you pull that one from ASP root subscription is that just a made up one equals row key I think you just made that up didn't you Kim okay build Build, build, build. Oh, that's not good. Well, this is what I think Kim was talking about. Or is this something different? This is in the edit whose subscription ID is that fine? So I'm going to try it. I have no idea if any of this is going to work. It compiles, so I'm going to ship it. Site. Run it. I'm going to have to stop soon. It's getting past my bedtime. But I kind of want to see this work now. So, subscriptions. We are going to edit Martin's subscription, which is this one. <laughs> File you cannot be null. String to escape. Oh, it didn't like that. Oh, what did I break? That's in the site. That's in the service. Update subscription. And here. Go all the way into there? I thought I had a breakpoint in my edit. Run that one past me again, Kim. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about this one here. Subscription. Subscription ID equals item dot row key. Yep, thank you for that. That's not 
No, that's not actually what I wanted at all, is it? It's this one. Cut. Paste. Try that again. Let's see what this does. Subscriptions. Edit. That didn't go very well. Oh, have I not got a root? I thought I did have a root for edit this time. Was that not one of the first things I did? I thought we did that. I thought we did that. Why has that not got edit in it? No root for the get edit. You would probably want it for the details as well, eventually. No root for the get edit. That's that's what this one is. Right? So I thought we did have it. That's, I added that first, and then I added the edit subscription. Oh. I didn't need that on the delete, though. I didn't need that on delete. You're talking about that, right? Yeah, okay, I, I take that point, but I'm curious as to why the, why it's needed, because the post and the get method for delete don't use URL parameters. So if I go back a step and I say delete here, then it knows that it's going there. No, it's this link is broken. It's it's the link that's broken. The link doesn't include edit for some reason. Whereas this one includes delete and then question mark subscription ID. This edit just includes that. I think I've broken something. I don't disagree that we should. I should be more explicit. I'm happy with that. Um, but new edit edit new subscription ID Roki. What have I done? Or what have I not done? Edit, edit, blah. Yeah. Subscription ID, subscription ID. Item that will keep. Let's run that again. you have a root attribute on the controller? Mm, 
well. Subscriptions add, subscriptions delete, blah. So I'm not clear on. So on my controller, I don't have a root attribute, but I haven't I haven't needed it yet. So why would I suddenly need it for this one? I'm still not clear on. So you're saying up here. I need root and then what name? Template. Kind of waiting to see what someone comes back with here because I'm very confused as to why for one of them I would need something and the other one not. So, so hold on. So, what you're saying is that I have to add this here, but I but why? I didn't need to do that on the delete. So why would I suddenly need to do it for the edit? What am I missing here? on them. Okay, so the Oh, I see what you're saying. Maybe. Oh, because of this. I see. I think I see what you're saying now. Subscriptions. Edit. That. If I go back to here and take this out again, because I don't need that, then we run it. But I have some tidy up work here to do to make those consistent. Yeah. Subscriptions. Delete is still going to delete subscription ID. Edit is now going to subscriptions edit. So this will now take me into here and it'll take me to the edit page. Now that's got a hard coded row key in there. So that part didn't work. It's taking me to subscriptions edit <coughs> but it's not posting to the right place. So what do we do there? We said this part. So I didn't like row key here.
while I'm here. This wants to be the same subscriptions edit. Subscriptions edit subscription ID. Okay, sorry, what did I miss? What's the name of the param in the edit action? You mean this one? Subscription ID. Oh, you're saying that this one should match this one. I think that's what you're getting at. Which it does. Well, it's this one. Or, hmm, it's here. It's submitting the form. This The button is there. So the button is submitting to the form URL, which is what we're editing up here. Unless I... Let's run it again. Let's close up some of these dead ones. So we've got subscriptions. We click on Edit Martin. We come into here. So this part we know works. No, no, the edit link appears, but I'm saying when I click over the save, it's got edit row key as the where it's submitting to. So it's the bringing up of the edit works. So my intention is to change this to Patrick, and I should be able to hit save. But that's going to take me nowhere because it's submitting to edit slash row key rather than edit slash the rookie <laughs> right so this is the part that i'm confused about because if we do an edit on here developer tools where do developer tools go more tools developer tools why is developer tools not working Really? Now they want to work. If I go back to here and I click on this guy, then the form here is not going to the right place. So I'm and I've, I've never seen this syntax before. So... ASP root. So it doesn't know about those things like it did before. If you are looking it up, Kim, can you send me a, a URL to what you find? I'll bring it up. Um, ASP action. ASP root. Anchor tag help. By changing row key to at model dot row key. Sure.
ASP root. So that's kind of what we're doing, right? So root value. Where did it go? ASP root. Oh, do I need it in quotes? Well, let's, let's see what it gives us. So let's do edit again. And now let's see what it's submitting. Okay, so now now that's submitting to the right place. Let's change this to Patrick and click save. That didn't take us anywhere. And I would have hoped that it would have taken us into here. And I did have a breakpoint on there. So did that give us any sort of an error? Click the button. The server is refusing to service the request because the entity of the request is in a format not supported by the requested resource for the requested method. And the post is going to subscriptions, edit, blah. Which is where we're going here. Is this from body not? working the way that we expect it to. So the form, it does appear to be submitting, but it's saying no. Is it because we're submitting too many things? Should we not include all of the inputs? What do we think? Look at the HTML for the generated inputs. Sure. What do you want? Is there something specifically you wanted to see? Oh, you mean the CS HTML, you mean the view. Um, sure. We can try that. We can definitely do that. And then, if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to call it, because I need to go home. <laughs> so, edit. Ooh, that worked. So, the subscription ID is that. Recipient is Martin, and the E tag is that thing. So the from body is what we didn't want. So I'm going to say user identifier and object dictionary. So this object properties thing has a count of two, and then it is going to go into update subscription. That is then going to attempt to post the user ID and subscription along with that serialized JSON thing to our API. 
So in the API, we have we have a breakpoint. So let's send this over the wire. <laughs> Cannot return binary type for a string typed property. Didn't like me serializing an entity property. I can certainly try that. Is Mateus still on the line about serializing? Uh, about serializing the. Entity property from form from it almost looks like from 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 form. Okay, let's run this again. That's a good point, Kim. Thank you for that. From, from subscriptions edit Patrick save recipient is Patrick e tag is that thing okay so that seemed to work Kim thank you for that but then it blows up Error getting value from binary value on there. Okay. Hold on. Let's put this back to a string of string then. And that's going to fail because... string of string that should fail because we're newing up no where's my error build failed beautiful where's my error well it's, it's there but why not tell me about it error message string of string String, string, e tag, e tag, blah, fine, fine, but then in my API, that's now going to get me, let's stop this, string of string. That then is going to not be that. Then var new object properties is equal to new dictionary string of entity property. For each bar object property in object properties new object properties dot add you can use two dictionary. What now? Dot two use two dictionary where 
upon which object? Is that a link? Using system dot link. Using system dot link. Dot to look at that. To dictionary. Yeah, that's the part I was missing. That, I don't think it ever, have I used that? I must have used that before. Must have. Must have. Value dot. Hold on. Value. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Interesting. Okay. <sighs> what? Um, blah, blah, blah. Blah. Okay, so can we finally change Martin to Patrick? And then go home for the evening. Dev kept sight. Let's run it. <laughs> there may be a surgical procedure involved. Let's see what happens. Right, okay. So, we're going to click on subscriptions. We're going to click on Martin. I think it's still spinning up. We're going to click on Martin. We're going to change Martin to Patrick. And we're going to click save. We're going to run through that one. And that's going to take us into here. We're going to run through this one. Ooh. Ooh. Right. Further. F10. Data. Converting to a string of string. That didn't work. Error converting. What now? Could not cast or convert from system dot string to system dot Hold on. Patrick. Save. Run. Run. F10. 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 So data currently has recipient and e tag in it. Fine. But it's this part that's failing. Why why does it matter that the e tag isn't removed yet? We haven't got that far. It's failing. I I agree it shouldn't matter. But if I hit F ten here, it blows up. Saying Saying, you're getting annoying. Oh, you're getting annoying. Watch window. 
I just, I just showed you the JSON. I just showed you. I just showed you. It was right there. I had it open. It should have been. Let's go back one more time. Right. Martin to Patrick. Save. Run through that one. Run through that one. Right, we're in here. Everybody watching. Data. Data. Seriously, data. Here. Recipient, Patrick. Oh. Would it be the... No, they escape correctly. So, yes, it's a string. I agree. The JSON is fine. So why? Why did Lee? Why why? Does that blow up? Could not cast or convert message could not cast or convert from system.string to system collection generic dictionary of string of string what am i what am i what am i what have I forgotten is there a different deserialized method that should be used perhaps you mean in the service or no, you're meaning in here. You're meaning this one. Mm. So yeah, this is the Azure function that's just doing a deserialized object. But in the service where we're serializing it, we are doing Where do we send it? That was over here. System dot oh Do I need to specify here what we are serializing? Dictionary string of string. Do I need to do that here? No, you're right, because it, it has the type at that point. No, you're right. Any bright ideas from anyone before I call it a night? Because that, to me, should work. Why that? Uh, how are you putting what does that mean what what do you mean how am i putting putting as json oh as in I don't need this? Maybes. Maybes. 
maybes. Let's give it a try. So it would serialize for us. So it was then trying to serialize, it was trying to deserialize a serialized, serialized object, which might cause a problem. I can see how that could get confusing. Okay. Okay, this is definitely the last time. We're gonna ch we're gonna change Martin to Patrick, and then we're gonna close up for the night. I'm gonna do the thing, the thing with the stuff. But I feel we need to run this, otherwise the API is never gonna work. And then edit Patrick. Save. We run it. We're in. F10. Data. Object properties. Oh. Okay. So object properties is a dictionary with a count of two. Look at that. I'm going to say, give me the e tag, and I'm going to remove the e tag from object properties. We've now only got one thing in there. If the e tag is not equal to the e tag. And then we return a conflict, but it's the same. So then this magic that Matthias came up with, I'm going to create a new entity. And that entity has stuff in it. Now it's magically put a recipient into here with a value of God knows, Patrick. Then I'm going to use the merge operation. Oh my goodness. That seemed to just do stuff. I'm going to hit play. And then it's going to redirect me back to an action. No, it's not. What did that fail on? What did that fail on? Unable to add subscription. Unable to cast object of type dynamic table entity to type subscription. Okay, so that your ma your magic didn't work there, Matthias. Did I did I do something silly? I kind of guessed at this last part. Table operation dot merge. Maybe not same type returned. Oh, you are meaning here. I see. Okay, let's try it one more time. Mm, I see what we're getting. At. Or let's let's check to see if it actually did do the thing with the stuff. No, didn't change Martin to Patrick though. So let's try it one more time. Martin to Patrick. Run. F10. I would have expected it to have done it. So result. Result. 204 status code. Result. Properties. Recipient. Value. Patrick. Right. So at this point, it should have updated the table, right? Oh, hold on, people. That was my typo. See, this is no sequel coming into play here. I broke that. I broke that. Recipient wants to be recipient. Ah, oh, and I never checked to see what the type was either. Um, but we're still running. So result dot result is a table entity. So what should I return here? I want to return the updated thing. So how do I get? 
how do I get a subscription from this? Or should I just return the result and be done with it? Um, I kind of want to return the thing. So let's just put that in there then. Okay, so back to table storage. I'm going to... How how do I how do I get rid of a table? How do I how do I get rid of it? Um, column options. I want to delete it. Mm. Clear all. How do I how do I get rid of this guy? Clear all. Okay. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> it's not really what I wanted to do at all. <sighs> Delete. Okay, back to the drawing board. So let's run the API. You've just hidden the other cells. Oh, did I? Did I? Oh, well, we deleted it there. Let, let's put it all back in, shall we? Okay, where's my site? Run my site. Run my site. Set to no. Interesting. Okay. Subscriptions. Subscriptions should come back with nothing because there are no subscriptions for the currently logged in user. So we're going to create a new one. And we're going to say Martin, Matrin, Mart, Martin, create. Beautiful. Okay. Edit. Patrick. <laughs> Save. Run. 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 Oh, it didn't like that. Oh, that's the serialization on the way back. Didn't like the serialization on the way back, so we're, we're going to have to fix that. But Patrick, Martin has become Patrick. We finally did it. And then I can go ahead and click delete, which will ask me if I really want to delete Patrick. And I'll say, yes, please. And then that will run through. And it'll say, back to get subscriptions. And it'll say, there we go. Look at that. Okay. I think that worked. I think that worked. Did that work? I haven't just made that up. So the only thing that's really left is the details page. So at the minute, we don't really have details because, well, I mean, there's only one property. <laughs> there's only one thing in there. Um, but we have a button and we don't have any action for it. So we should probably create a details page to then provide some additional details. And then that's everything stubbed out. And then we need to clean up the existing pages so that there are some partials, as Kim suggested hours ago, so that there's consistency between the pages. We add them as partials. And then, then I think we're in a good position, right? So we have, we've stubbed out the API. 
we've added the controllers and the services. There's some tidy up work to be done in terms of what's being returned to the API because there's there's currently a, an exception being thrown when it tries to serialize the object again. We need to remove a bunch of unnecessary. We, there's, some, there's a lot of tidy up work to be done. A lot, of, a lot of tidy up work to be done. But from a functional point of view, from purely purely functional point of view, we have adding subscriptions. We have editing subscriptions. We have deleting subscriptions. And implement where's Signal R coming into the mix here? Now we haven't spoken about Signal R yet, Kim. What's your what's your little thought process there? Why do I want Signal R? I don't think I want Signal R. No. Curious as to what your thoughts here are. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to close this. Let's close down while I've still got the energy to close down and I will create a I'm going to create some commits. Let's close some of this down. What are I so I so let me clarify. I'm familiar with what signal R is, but in, in what context? Thinking about subscriptions, it would be good to get those in real time. Don't really want to give the game away in terms of what we're creating yet. So I'm not sure if I want to say too much more there, but once you register a subscription with the site, other stuff over here is going to happen. There's not really much to come back to the UI as such. It's exactly, exactly. So this front end is really just to put the subscription, the entry into that Azure table, Azure table, that table, that row in the Azure table storage is really all the front end's doing. And then the background process kicks in does stuff with that subscription and then things happen from a ui perspective there's very little else to be done i think that's all i'm going to say there i think that's all i'm going to say uh so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say git add here git commit and then i'm going to say Uh, end of Monday night stream. Today's date is the 8th of July. But that's, that's a little bit unnecessary, but let's put it in anyway. Save. Get push. I don't disagree with you, Kim. I don't disagree. Um, I'd be giving the game away. I'd be giving the game away if I said too much more. So I, I need to stop myself. Get add. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? That's not going to work either. Get add dot get commit end of Monday night stream 8th of July 2019 save close it's Tuesday here now <laughs> I should have thought of that it's 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 Tuesday for everyone pretty much that's been talking on the stream here um, it's past my bedtime I need to go to bed uh, so some housekeeping um, I'm not here on Friday to do a stream because I'm away. I should be here on Monday, next Monday. Following Friday, I'm not here because I'm in. I'm traveling to KCDC to present a talk on Cake at the Kansas City Developer Conference. So I should be back the following Monday. So the next two Fridays, we're not not here. Um. 
but I should be here Monday. Now, the only caveat to that is I'm traveling on the Tuesday of next week. And it's as to whether I get out to play or not on the Monday. So I'll keep you posted as to whether that's going to happen or not. But in terms of what we've still got to do, lots of tidy up work. We need to add style cop into some projects. We need to uh, delete some tidy up stuff, uh, add some partials. Uh, we also need to think about uh, restricting the addition of subscriptions when there's too many. So there's a, so there's a limit, there's an upper, uh, an upper limit threshold on how many subscriptions a user is allowed to have. So we need to add that in and not allow that to happen. And we need to validate that both on the client side and on the server side. So we need to do those. Um, and then, and then we could be in a position to start actually doing some functionality. So then is Mateus, is, is the back end all ready to go? Is Mateus still on the line? Are we ready to start beta testing stuff after that and having people, I mean, we need to figure out deployments of the sites and the APIs and all that sort of stuff. But from a purely functional point of view, I think we could be getting close to having some early, early beta testing of the dev, dev gap service. And it's exciting times. So with that, I'm going to say that I'm done and I'm going to end the recording. So thank you all for coming along to tonight's stream and I will hopefully see you next Monday. Uh, if not, I will keep you posted on exactly when I'll be streaming again. Okay, right. Thank you very much. Uh, see you all later. Bye-bye.